Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about string properties and methods. Well, property, there's only one, but it still gets attention. But before we get started, I wanted to say a special thank you to Monday.com for sponsoring this series. Check out Monday.com if you need a way to organize your work. Basically, the way Monday.com works is it breaks everything up into what's known as a pulse, which you can basically think of a pulse as a task, and then you can label it based on the status of this task. So it's a great way to keep track of what hasn't been started, what's in progress, what's blocked, and what's completed. This is a great tool if you're trying to do anything like Agile or something where you basically break up your work into a series of tasks. Plus, have you guys ever realized how hard it is to say tasks, like plural? Like, it's just so awkward. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys. Check out monday.com. Now, in this video, we're going to be diving into string properties and methods. So the only property is really simple, and that is length. And what this does is it gets the number of characters. Very, very simple. Now, the difference between a property and a method, just so we're clear, a property gives us a value, and a method will do something and it can compute a value, so sometimes they'll both give us a value, but when we have a property, don't expect it to do anything crazy. It's just gonna give us a number or whatever the return type is. When you hover over it, the int, I'd like to scroll onto it, but it goes away every time. The first thing there, int, that's the return type. That's the type of data we should expect when we call this property. And then inside of the little curly braces, it has get. Sometimes it'll say get set, and when it just says get, it means you can only read it, you can't write to it. If it has set, that means you can write to it and change the length, but we can't do that, so we can only get the length. So when we execute this, you can see we get the value 5. It's the number of characters in the string, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the only property. If you put that dot again, you can see that it's the only one with a little p on it. Most of the rest of these have m's, which are methods, which will do something for us. When you call a property, you just leave the name as is, but when you have a method, you have to put parentheses after it. So let's go through some of the methods. The first one we're gonna talk about is compare to. So when we click this, what we do is we pass in another string in here and it will return true if they are equal. So I can type in Caleb here and then we do dot net run. We get zero, which is interesting because oftentimes people will think of zero as false and one is true, but that's not really the case with compare to. With compare to, it'll actually be zero if they are equal and then it will be negative or positive depending on which one comes first in the alphabet. So for example, if I put a B here instead of a C and we run this, look what happens, we get one. And then if I put a D, we get negative one. So name has the C in the first scenario where we put a B, we got a one. So to understand this, if the string that we call compare to on, in this case name, comes before whatever we pass in, we get a negative value. If it comes after, in the case of Balaam, <laughs> if it comes after, we get a positive number. So later on, there is an easier way to compare to see if something's equal. You could just say name equals equals Caleb, and this will return true or false, but it's not going to give us that extra functionality of saying which one came first. So this compare to might come in handy if you're doing some sort of sorting algorithm. So basically, since this compare to returns an integer, you can assign this to something. So I could say something like this. And then what you can do is you can use this value later on to branch in your program, maybe swap some values and so forth. So that is how compare to works. I do wanna call out something though. In the case of using double equals, this does work, but if you're going to other languages, this doesn't always work. So if, for example, in Java, equals equals is not going to work the way you would expect compared to C-sharp. So in C-sharp, this is going to compare the values Caleb with the values Caleb. In Java though, they are going to be compared to see if they're the same object, so that works a little bit differently. Just to throw that out there. All right, what else is on our list? The next one is index of, which is pretty cool. You can basically just pass in a character here, or you can even pass in a string. So I could put a L, and then I'm just gonna write this out. What we should expect to get is one, because C is zero, and then A is one. So that's how index of works. If you're looking for a particular substring inside of the string, you can do that. And I'm going to go back to just printing this directly rather than storing it in a variable. So just like that. With index of, you have the opportunity to pass in another argument, which will be the starting index to look for something. So for example, if my name was Kalalib, we could pass in another argument and say we want to start at the second index. Now when we do a .NET run, we get the result three rather than one. So that's pretty cool. 
What else can we do? You could do the same thing with last index of, which will basically work from the right side of the string. So that's pretty simple, you can check that out. You can use pad left, pad right to basically add extra space to the left or right. You can remove a section of the string. So for example, we could remove starting at index one, we could remove two characters. When we run this, we get the original string Caleb. That's cool. What else do we got? So if you remember in the previous video, I told you guys how to take a character array and pass that into the constructor for a string and you would get a string. Well, you can actually go backwards and use to char array to get back to a character array if you wanna do that. We also have to lower, which is going to lowercase all of the letters, which is paired with to upper, which will uppercase all of the letters. This is useful for string comparisons if you wanna see if two things are equal, but you don't wanna consider the casing. Well, you could lowercase both of them or you could uppercase both of them and then compare them. Then there's a series of trim methods so you can use trim to get rid of extra spaces at the beginning and end. So if I just put a bunch of spaces in here, a couple tabs, when we run this, you can see it just returns the normal Caleb. There's no extra spaces there. There is a left and right version if you wanna keep padding on one side. So that is trim end and trim start. Last one I'm gonna talk about is split. We haven't talked much about string arrays, so this might be new to you guys, but basically what happens is with split, you can split up a string based on some character. So for example, let's say we have, hello, my name is Caleb. What we can do is we can pass in a space in here as a character. So remember to use single quotes there. And when we .NET run this, we get string with these boxes here. That means it's a string array. So what we can do is we can assign this to a string array by getting rid of this console log. So just say string and then put the square brackets, give it a name and assign it name.split. Now you can access any individual words by saying words and then inside of square brackets, give it a number. So if we wanna get the second word, my, we would pass in a one because this one's gonna be zero and then this one's gonna be one. Save that and run it. And you can see we get my, so that's pretty cool. This might come up if you're working with comma separated values or getting data from some source because they'll often split things up by what's known as a delimiter, which in this case, the delimiter is just a space, but you'll often see commas or hyphens or whatever it might be. So those are some basic string methods. I know this is kind of like reference material and probably boring, like hardcore, but it's definitely good just to just get some experience with some of these. So go through them, give them a try, see if they give you the expected results, just to get some more experience with strings. So thanks guys, that's all I got for this one. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about something pretty cool. So please be sure to check it out and I will see you then. Oh yeah.